and I was done gazing at the millions of stars that were in the sky, but I actually turned on the iPad and started watching some stuff. So the other stuff we've got here, battery power bank that lives on the sea -Doo. This I actually used for a time-lapse last night for one of my GoPros. And then here we have um, a little bit of a libation from last night. I felt like I deserved a treat. So we had a nice little bottle of wine, which was lovely. Uh, insect stuff, this is like a little USB powered uh, bug zapper lamp for the little mosquitoes. Uh, and then obviously some uh, just regular uh, mosquito spray. Temperature right now, 79 degrees. It's beautiful. And I wanna get on the water before it gets too much hotter because it is perfect right now. Water, hat, sunglasses, GoPro, wallet, you know, the usual stuff. Then I was mentioning my little makeshift footstool. Well, this is the link box uh, off the sea -Doo, and this has got my kitchen in it, basically. So we have water in here. I also bought my live straw just in case I ran out of water and I did need to filter any of the uh, lake water. This would allow me to do that. It's got the straw built in, which is really nice. Um, but then just some simple stuff. So I've got my uh, knockoff jet boil, which does a great job. Perfect for these kinds of trips where everything is in there. Even the fuel is inside of that right now. So very small footprint. Uh, I've got some breakfast skillet things that uh, I might cook up once I get back to the truck. I'm doing all right right now. I'm not that hungry. Uh, and then we've got uh, a little sponge here for cleaning up. Some cliff bars. These things are absolutely essential on trips like this. 300 and something calories per bar. 260 calories per bar. So they definitely get you through the day if you can't stop and actually make some food. Uh, some rice, some uh, food wipes. So this is uh, biodegradable, like all natural stuff that allows you to uh, clean pots and pans, wipe your hands, cutlery, all that kind of stuff. There's only two things I've been slacking on this trip. One is the fact that I only had solo cups to drink my wine last night. I should have bought my little insulated cups, but I left them in the truck. Two is I need a little soft-sided cooler so that I can bring ice with me because I didn't have the ability to bring ice and that would have been clutch yesterday. Just have that nice cold, cold water when you're riding. But other than that, that is basically my uh, little breakfast setup over here. Uh, and it all easily fits in this, even though it's not in any way organized. Uh, and so if I did want to bring more food, I could. I could also, I guess, put ice in here, like on the bottom if I wanted to. Obviously, sea -Doo does have a link cooler. They have the big one, the big fishing one, and they also have a smaller one too so if I did want to bring ice in one of those I could but with the way I have the ski configured I have three fuel jugs right now and then two of these link boxes which means that all of my link attachment points are taken up and then I also have my dry bag ratchet strapped to the top of that to be honest this trip I didn't need those fuel jugs but like I always say I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it there actually are three fuel docks within very easy range uh, of any of the points you want to ride on the river so if you do come out here just know you don't need to bring extra fuel it's the, there's a place 12 minutes down the river from where I am now and then there's another place about 30 minutes down the river from them and then about another 30 minutes down there so you'll be good you don't need to get range anxiety so in hindsight I could have used one of my link accessory attachment points to bring the ice chest from sea -Doo. so the tent is just an Amazon find uh, lost nature it's called uh, it's a four man I think they sell it as but I always find that with tents, you basically have to half the number of people to figure out what you could comfortably sleep. Uh, and obviously I have a cot bed in there and I like to have it go diagonally so that I don't touch the sides. And then it gives me room for all of my other stuff. So this, for how small it packs down, is actually a really good option. It's not that lightweight, but it definitely isn't bad. I've just been drying some of my gear from yesterday. I've mentioned these in another video. These are these quick dry tactical trousers that I've been wearing to ride. And then I've also got the uh, matching shorts as well, which are nice. They just dry super quick, very lightweight. Um, and then my, uh, my UV shirt. So all of this is bone dry, which is lovely. Let's get onto the inside so I can show you where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean me going like this. So as we step inside, you will see my very comfy bed. So this uh, is actually a Helinox cot bed. Uh, you can get legs for these as well that allow you to lift it even more off the ground. I actually don't mind it being low like this. It's very lightweight, very easy to set up. It is literally just the two rails down the side and then there are four cross braces. So you thread this onto the rails, put the cross braces in, boom, you set up. Very, very comfortable. Obviously I'm bougie, so I also have this uh, sleeping pad as well that inflates very easily using this uh, little foam hand or foot pump. So again, packs down very light, but 
definitely increases comfort. And then for sleeping, obviously I didn't want a sleeping bag because it has been so hot. Yesterday was in the uh, the low hundreds. It was about 104, 103 degrees. Uh, and so I knew that I wasn't gonna be uh, hot during the night. So this is actually a sleeping bag liner. Uh, so it's zipped, so you can zip it all the way up to the top um, and so I just sleep either on or inside of this super duper comfy and then down here the nice thing is that it has like a little pouch so you can fold it up and over your camping pillows and then that way things don't move around this again another Amazon find uh, camping pillow it looks very soft it looks like it's deflated it's not because this pad has a built-in pillow I just use this as like just a little bit of extra plushiness and this material is really nice as well uh, the other nice thing about it is it has a strap that goes around your sleeping pad so it doesn't move around and fall off the end in the night so overall as a sleep system this is very very comfortable considering how small it packs up then talking about comfort this this right here is a little battery powered fan that I have in the truck. I actually have three of these now. Diesel has one in the back and then I have two in the actual truck camper itself. And it turns up pretty good. So that's full power. It'll run full power for anywhere between five to seven hours I've found, which is absolutely incredible. So what I tend to do is either have them plugged into a continuous power source, like a little power bank or something like that. That way you can run it full ponies like this all night, no problem. Or like I did last night, I just dial it down to about 75% and you don't lose that much in terms of the breeze, but it will run all night. And I mean, right now it still has three LEDs remaining of four and I've been running it all night. I don't know quite how it's done that. It's never done that well before, but it's very cool. You can articulate it. It's got this nice little hanging hook. So if you wanted to put it flat, then you could sit it down on a table and point it at you. So it does have this LED light as well, which has three brightness settings, which is cool because when you are hanging them up from the top of the tent, then it does act as a little dome light as well. What's cool about having it like this as well is that it does this like mini oscillation and so it was like having an actual ceiling fan last night. And obviously I didn't have the main cover over the top, so I did get a nice breeze through here. But yeah, I was so comfy last night. It was amazing. Just looking up, watching the stars. Oh, it was bliss. This is probably the bougiest part of my camping setup. This is the EcoFlow River 2, uh, and it is an electric generator. So basically it is a battery bank on steroids. So you've got your 12 volt here, two USB A's, a USB C, and then two AC outlets. And if you've seen any of my truck videos, you will know that I have its much, much, much bigger brother in the truck in the form of the Delta Max. 2 which is huge you could literally power a house with it I have it being powered by solar panels and the AC outlets in my truck and that powers my fridge and gives me absolutely unlimited power when I'm on the road I actually used that to charge this before this trip so I have this set up right now just with my MagSafe charger plugged into the USB-C I was charging some GoPros overnight using the USB-A ports but this will allow me to charge my phone and my watch just using the one power port which is nice then up on top we've got my LED lenser ML4 little lantern which is perfect for these camping trips. Nice diffuse light, it does white and it does red so you don't ruin your night vision. Uh, and then this here is definitely something that you should bring with you when you come to a place like this where you're totally off grid and there is no signal whatsoever. So this is the Zolio uh, satellite communicator. It has an SOS button here so if I got into trouble all I would need to do is push this SOS button if I can open it with one hand. Push that SOS button and help would come uh, but what I use it for is for text messaging using the app on my phone. So as long as I have a clear view to the sky, it will allow me to send text messages using satellite. Uh, you have to do it through their app. It doesn't just work through iMessage, but it's absolutely fine. Sends an SMS, people get it. You can also do email. And if somebody has the Zolio app on their phone, like let's say you have a loved one that's keeping tabs on you while you're away, then you can just message them using the app as well. So very, very handy just to check in with people. It also has a really cool feature where it will drop breadcrumbs of your location location so you just have it clipped to you and again as long as it can see the sky then it will just ping everybody in your emergency contacts with a location every five minutes or every four hours like whatever you want to set it at so that's another thing as well if you want that hands-off communication with people where they can just check to see where you are and to make sure you're on track uh, great thing to have when you're out in the wilderness like this because all it takes is one slip one cut one break one fall one whatever and you're out here 
here in the middle of nowhere with no help. And if you've got no mobile phone signal, how are you gonna get that? So for the price it is, I, I wanna say it's less than $200, like $150 or something. Um, and then you have a monthly subscription, which is like tens of dollars. It's really not a lot. It's so worth it. Uh, and I use it a lot when I go out in the truck. Obviously when I'm out in the water, I have all of my stuff on my life jacket, like my ACR rescue link, uh, which is my personal location beacon. And that would work out here too, but this is sort of more for like land-based stuff and this is more marine. God, look how much salt I sweated out yesterday. You just cannot keep any type of mineral or electrolyte in your body when you're out in a place like this. So there you go guys, that is the camping setup. So all that's left to do now is for me to break this down and then load it up onto the ski and I'll show you how it all fits onto the sea -Doo. But it blows my mind that I'm able to bring this much stuff and this much luxury, honestly. I mean, I wouldn't call this camping. I wouldn't quite call it glamping, but it's pretty close. And I know all of the ultralight backpackers watching this are gonna be like, oh my God, this guy, this isn't glamping. Wine, iPad, portable battery bank, like. I get it, I, I, get, I get it, I get it, I'm kind of bougie. I just like being comfortable, all right? I just Listen, if you wanna pack super thin undies so that your pack's 0.01 grams lighter, you do you. But um, I want an iPad and I want a cot bed and I want an additional sleeping mattress and okay, yeah, I am, I am quite bougie. Yeah. And there you have it. That is the sum total of the camping stuff other than my box over there that's got all my kitchen stuff in and then I'm gonna change into those clothes. That is it. Got my rubbish, got stuff that comes in the front of the ski, all of the camping stuff goes into the 100 litre dry bag that comes with the Explorer and then obviously just my life jacket. And perfect timing, the sun has just crested that hill. So if you use the smaller fuel tanks, these are the new five gallons. If you use the four gallons, then they actually have link uh, accessory points on the top. So you can tie the uh, dry bag to the top of them using the little built-in swivel connectors. I'm using these big ones, which means that I can't, but it is very, very easy to secure it just with a couple of ratchet straps. I do one side to side, and then I do one front to back, and it goes nowhere. Now obviously, figure out for yourself what's best to do it from on your ski. What I like to do is go off the luggage wrap and then uh, I'll clip the buckles on top of the strap here, just for that extra bit of security. I don't know if it actually make, makes a difference, but uh, it makes me feel better about it. It's not going anywhere. And there you go, my entire camp set up on the sea -Doo. Everything that you just saw me with up there is now secured and ready for adventure. I cannot get over how amazing this thing is and how well it does with the additional weight on the back. I, what I tend to do is trim the nose down with the VTS and that just kind of levels you out a little bit. And then honestly, it doesn't feel that much different to riding without all of this stuff. Absolutely bloody fantastic. So one last sweep of the campsite, make sure we haven't left anything, leaving it better than we found it. Taking out my rubbish and also found a couple of other bits as well last night, so. This is all ready for the next time you guys want to come here. So the more eagle-eyed amongst you might have realized that this is not waterproof anymore. I've actually drilled holes through it and there's drains in the bottom. And the reason being, this is for my anchor and for my fenders. So all of this stuff is typically wet when it goes in the box. And if I put it in, close this and seal it up, the next time I come to use it, it's kind of stinky. So this little bit of airflow from in the front here as well, there's a couple of holes along the front and the back and then the drains on the bottom. Just mean that my ropes won't go moldy and everything stays somewhat fresher than it would be if it was sealed like this one is. Oh, I'm so hot, I am so hot. All right, we're gonna go for a dip before we leave because within 10 miles, I'll be dry. Oh, this is icy cold. What was it saying yesterday? 62 degrees or something? Whew. Yeah, oh, that's nice. 
Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen my camping video from last week where I actually brought the sea out here onto the Colorado River, go back and check that out because it's well worth a watch. I found some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever found and just had the best time. So please go and watch it. And uh, if you are interested in any more camping stuff, I also do truck camping. I have an overland camping rig that I've built based on a uh, Ram 2500. So go and give that a check out too. And if you are an OG subscriber, thanks for watching as always. I appreciate the support. I think that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, everything that I've mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. And that's it. So until next time, remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya.